All right, Jones, how are you going to find that statue and all this junk? It's a medieval gargoyle, or a good imitation. It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. Marcus still thinks this chest belonged to Columbus. Oof! It's from the Shamit collection. It's from the Shamit collection. Very sharp. I think I've read them all. I think I've read them all. These books don't look familiar. Uh-oh. Better get that roof checked. Possibly an ancient Mesopotamian cat god. <coughs> Yow! I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Charles. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor. But I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. My word, India, a small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? I still think it's a fake. Then you won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith? Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is this? He 
got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. What is the spy one for the Buddhist statue? <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a phony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. How odd. You can say that again. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Imagine the suckers who actually pay to see Sophia's Lost World Lectures. The doors are locked, sir. It's today's paper. It's today's paper. I don't think that'll work. It's today's paper. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. Hmm, it's unlocked. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. I'm here to enjoy Madam's outrageous orations. This ain't that kind of show. I think there's a misunderstanding here. Are you calling me stupid? No siree. Lucky for you. Now shove off. Good night. Move along home now. There's got to be some way to talk my way in. I can't get there from here. The way looks looks like it might lead backstage. It won't come any further toward me. The way looks blocked. It won't go any further that way. The way looks looks like it might lead backstage. The way looks blocked. Looks like it might lead backstage. Hold on! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. I need to talk to that so-called psychic. It's Madame Sophia to us employees, fella. Excuse me. Take it easy and watch the show. Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Glorious, prosperous, 
socially and technically advanced, beyond our wildest dreams. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. Excuse me. Shh. She's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Excuse me. Yeah, what now? I've got a newspaper here. So you do. Aren't you wondering about events of the day? I don't know. Maybe. How'd you like today's newspaper? Well, well, the late edition. I wonder if the Dodgers won. Watch the lights while I find out, okay? That doesn't seem to work. That doesn't seem to work. It won't go any further in that direction. Hmm, nothing happened. Hmm, nothing happened. There it goes. And I still feel the presence of Atlantis through... Uh... May I present Nurab Sal, the great Atlantean god of... of... Deceit. Deceit. Thanks, Indy. Indiana Jones? You've got some nerve. Go back, you big jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> oh, great. Good night, folks. Come on, mister. I've got a few words to mince with you. I'd say it's about time. Oh, no! Looks like Kerner got here first. Stay put. No one here. Nor here either. Dr. Uberman, fantastic news. We found the treasure we see. That's the second time Kerner slipped away. What does a Nazi spy want with old statues? Have you seen the newspaper? Listen to this. Germans claim victory in worldwide race to smash the uranium atom. Chief scientist Dr. Hans Ubermann announces plan to harness new sources of energy for the Third Reich. So?
practical results are years away. Of course they are. That's why they're looking for the power of Atlantis. Be serious. I used to think you'd make a good scientist. Yet you stole things from my expedition. Artifacts such as archaeology has never seen. Huh. You're lucky I don't have you arrested. So what if I kept a few pieces for myself? Look for a small coppery bead under those clippings in my desk. What do you know? Kerner missed the grand prize. What? My necklace. Watch closely. The bead is made of auric calcum, the mystery metal first mentioned by Plato. Now I'll place it in the medallion's mouth. Did you see that? Yeah, creepy. Is your electric bill paid up? That was Nurab Sal. His spirit is close. I'm not interested in spiritual mumbo-jumbo. Suppose I gave this aura calcum business any credence, which I don't. Atlantis has been underwater for centuries. Shh! I'm getting something. Nurab Sal speaks. He bids us find the... what? A, a book, yes. The Lost Dialogue of Plato. Another fine myth. If Plato wrote it, later authors would have reported it. What if the Nazis have already found a copy? You ever think of that? Hmm. You found this stuff in Iceland, right? Yes, near our old dig site. I thought so. Who's working there these days? Bjorn Heimdall, I believe. Maybe we should pay him a visit. What do you say? I thought you'd never ask. Sophia. Yes? Remember this place? The Jastro Expedition. How could I forget? Cold enough for you? Even colder than my feelings towards you, Jones. What do we do now? Let's look for Heimdall. It's an eel figurine trapped in ice. Dr. Heimdall. Dr. Indiana Jones, I believe, and Madame Sophia Hapgood. This is my dig site now. Go away. I thought you were digging up Norse graves in Denmark. I was. Obviously, now I'm not. Not feeling very friendly today, are we? I like solitude. It helps me think. Doctor, what do you expect to find here? The secret of Hyperborea. That's what the Greeks called Iceland, you know. You've read how they sailed north to a fog-shrouded land, and how they never set foot upon it? Ha! <laughs> After traveling thousands of miles, mere fog wouldn't turn them back. Some idiots claim they've ever tailed by ghosts. Puppycock, you know what actually stopped them, Sean? Maybe they didn't allot any time on their itinerary. No, no, no! They were stopped by a first field put here by beings not of this earth. Hmm, that's fascinating, Doctor. Have you ever heard of Plato's Lost Dialogue? Yes, there are rumors about such a book, but I've yet to see it. There are two people you might want to visit. Charles Sternhardt in Tikal, a shady fellow, who claims he translated the whole thing. And Philippe Costa in the Athos Island. As a researcher, he's a farce, but he's a sharp trader. 
But why did these beings show up here? I am convinced that these travelers came to Earth to form colonies like Atlantis, using Hyperborea as a spaceport. Up north here, we're close to the ether. It's a perfect landing site. So what's the link between Hyperborea and Atlantis? Why, the Yastro expedition, the one you're about to work on. Recently I saw pieces from it, pieces that are clearly Atlantean. I see. Somebody must have been selling them. Go ahead, blame it all on me. So you completely discount the supernatural? Completely! If it's supernatural you want, talk to Sternhart and Costa. What was that about the lost dialogue? Talk to Sternhart and Costa. Where did you say those pieces come from? If it's artifacts of Atlantis you want, talk to Sternhart and Costa. What is this thing you're working on? The bronze eel here? Oh, it's a probably a homing beacon for wayward spaceships. Soon I'll have it out of the ice. So long. Good luck, fellow believer. Sophia. What's on your mind? I think the good doctor's got frostbite of the brain. I'll say, spacemen my eye. I don't want to interfere with Dr. Heimdall. Let's head for the airport. This is his house? This is it. Mr. Costa? This better be important. Be careful, Indy. Humor him. Trust me. I suppose you're selling something. If it's not a priceless artifact, I don't want it. I hear you know something about Plato's lost dialogue. Maybe so, maybe no. Who are you? I'm a fellow believer. Is that right? Do you know where Atlantis is? Well, yes, of course I do. Oh, do tell. Somewhere under the ocean? No, no, no! Come closer, boy, and I'll tell you. You're standing on it. The Azores? No one believes me. That hurts. Nice going, Indy. I could have done better. Yeah, sure. Sophia? Yes? Here, you talk to the man. My pleasure. Mr. Costa! This better be important. He's a touchy old bird. Watch and learn, Dr. Jones. Well, hello, beautiful. Professor Costa, my name is Sophia Hapgood. Madam Sophia? A renowned psychic? I hope my friend didn't pester you too much. He's a friend of yours? Well, no. He didn't pester me that much. We need some help from you. 
Happy to oblige. What can you tell us about Plato's Lost Dialogue? What do you want to know? Have you read it? Nope. Do you have it? Nope. Do you know what's in it? Not exactly. Can you get it for me? Sorry. Do you know where we could find it? Well now, that depends. I might trade the information for a rare Atlantean artifact, such as a certain necklace I've heard about. I'll never trade away my necklace. Well then, if that's how you feel, surprise me. Would you do business with my friend here? Madam, I'll do business with anyone. Thanks for your help. Goodbye for now. At your command, madam. Don't be a stranger now. What a charming old man. Trade, huh? If not your necklace, then what, I wonder? Excuse me? Yes? I think you better take over. Okay, I'll think of something. Mr. Costa? You again? What do you want? Let's talk about a trade. Okay. What you got? I'm offering this rare archaeology magazine. That magazine rejects all my articles. You keep it. Got anything else? I'm offering this genuine American-made bullwhip. Not a chance. What good is a whip in this day and age? Come back when you've got something worth my while. Don't start with me. Come on, let's go. He looks like a jungle rodent. He's too fast for me. Hold on, I'm not going anywhere near that snake. That doesn't seem to work. That doesn't seem to work. Hold on, I'm not going anywhere near that snake. 